I want to take a couple more minutes and go over some of the facts versus opinion that I'm finding on the coronavirus. I got a lot of positive response back from my last video and the email I sent before that where I'm pointing out some of the things that I've observed. The first fact I want you to know that this is day 11 on my corona beard. Okay, so I hope I do not wind up looking like Santa Claus. That's the big thing. I'm probably going to have enough weight on me, but I don't want to have a beard like Santa Claus. So I woke up this morning and it was a beautiful day here in Southern California. We've had like two weeks of just phenomenal rain. Everything's green. It's been cool, big billowy clouds, blue skies. I was excited to get a lot of stuff done. I got up, I made some breakfast. I turned the television on while I was eating my breakfast and I found out how bad it was. Completely ruined my day. Here's my question. How bad would it be if nobody was telling you how bad it was? And I've had a number of people I've talked to and I said, well, go to your front door and open it and look outside. Do you see any threats? And they go, no. I said, exactly. I walk down the street. I see more people now on the street because they're home, but they're out walking around happy, healthy, walking their dogs, saying hi, more social interaction than I've seen in a long, long time. So I want to go over a couple things that I found just to basically keep things stable. And, I, and, and when, I, when I talk about the press, actually, I'm going, to, I'm going to start with this right now. We're going to, I'm going to share a screen here with you. And I, I found, somebody sent me this clip, and I want to share it with you right now. So we're going to listen to Dr. Drew for a second. So Dr. Drew, are we overreacting yes. as... Yes. Mm. yes. I'm hearing this from doctors left and right. Yes, and we are not overreacting. The press is overreacting, and it makes me furious. The press should not be reporting medical stories as though they know how to report it. We were, if we have a pandemic, I won't know how to tell that we're actually having a pandemic because everything is an emergency. Mm. People that are infectious disease specialists, the CDC, the epidemiologists need to take this very seriously. The press needs to shut up mm. because you're more likely to die of influenza that's right, what right that's now. What right now. Right now. Saying. However, I may, I'm not trying to go against you, but I have a question. It is now beat SARS in terms of fatalities, 362, and they're saying But its spread, fatality rate is right. still lower. But they're saying it, it spreads fast. It's right? a mild illness. It spreads all over the place, and it's only at least 17,000 in documented infected. I bet there's hundreds of thousands of cases. 300 deaths, okay. and always in immunocompromised people, always in people that okay. are at risk for these sorts of things, if they get a severe viral respiratory infection, whether it's flu or corona or whatever, all of these can hurt people who are compromised. They can. The rest of us need to wash our hands carefully, get our influenza vaccines, listen to the CDC. If there's a problem, they will let us know. The it's CDC just, made it very clear that 5,000 people just in the last two weeks have died from the flu. Thank Here you. in America alone. Why are we panicking about that? No one died is. on the streets of Los Angeles this morning from homelessness. Why, wow. if that were coronavirus, people would freak the hell out. Right. Why aren't we putting our parties in the right place? It's the press. The press does not know how to report on medical issues. It's where I first learned Should about we have consultants? How could we, how could we fix this? Fix this. Uh, when Anthony Fauci, who's one of the leaders in infectious disease, gets on a national news broadcast, goes, don't worry about it, stop worrying about it. Good and then if there's some data where he says we need to worry about it, then you report on it. Otherwise, shut up. Get That's your flu vaccine. Exactly. Okay, that, I thought that was a great report. Just as an example, and you know, I, I sent that in the last video I had, I had the article from the New York Post where a 20 year old had died and it wound up that he wound up, we found out or wound up that he had leukemia. So he had a compromised immune system. This morning I got up and on the news, they said one person at Whole Foods had tested positive for coronavirus. Now what they didn't say was, out of the 3,000 employees that Whole Foods has in Southern California, one person has tested positive for coronavirus and they have been isolated and sequestered. They didn't say that. It's like, oh my gosh, all of Whole Foods could now be infected is what gets promoted. And it's that the other side of it is not promoted that people are staying in, people are following the, the, the instructions from our government. What gets reported are all the people that aren't. They go out and show people that aren't doing it because that creates news. So let's, let's look at some facts that we have going on here. I'm going to pull up the CDC site or the John Hopkins site that I was telling you about 
And let's just see, because that news clip was from about three weeks ago. The numbers were very low on it. So let's just see where we are right now. So right now, worldwide, we have 532,000 confirmed cases, 24,000 deaths, and 122,000, almost 123,000 people have recovered from that. Now, what they were talking about the flu, this is worldwide. In the U.S., it's estimated, I was on the CDC, CDC site, that over 25 million people in the U.S. have had the flu, and somewhere between 28,000 and 50,000 people have died from it so far this year. Those numbers, this number right up here, the 24,000 is worldwide. Let's look at the U.S. So if we look at the U.S., 85,000 people right now are confirmed cases. Now, one of the problems with the confirmed cases is we don't have the testing to test everybody in the U.S. and know exactly how many cases we have. But of the people that have been tested, 85,000, almost 86,000 tonight, and when I'm recording this, have been confirmed, and we've had almost 1,300 deaths. But we've had 26 million people, or 20 million, 25 million people that with, the, with, with the flu, and somewhere between 28 and 50 thousand deaths for the flu. That's why I talk about the press beating this thing around and not putting it in perspective. Now, a couple other things that I found. I want to go down through some, through some other um, stories that I found. This was a great article in the New York Times that explained how the coronavirus works. It's called the coronavirus because it has these little spikes that are like a crown that come out. And what they do is the cell membrane has little pieces of protein that sticks out and these spikes connect with the protein and that allows the cell to break the the coronavirus to break the membrane of the cell and so what it does it breaks the membrane of the cell and it goes in and invades the cell and then it starts leaking out this viral rna which is the effective infective component of it and that one cell can make, it talks about how it breaks it apart here and everything. This is, and I'm going to leave all these links in there for you. You can see it. And then it gets little pieces falling out here, and it can make millions of other coronavirus cells while it's sucking the life out of this cell. Okay? And then it, all these little pieces are what get coughed out, and that's what causes the infections to happen. So this link is going to be at the bottom of this video or in, in the email, so you can look at it if you want. Now, here's a couple interesting things that I found so far. Here's an article on how to kill the coronavirus learned from a Chinese expert. Now, this is from the CSAT Daily, which is an Indian newspaper. Not reported in the U.S. I haven't seen this. We scroll down here, and it says right here, Numerous laboratory studies show that the coronavirus is easily killed in 15 minutes at just 56 degrees centigrade or 133 degrees Fahrenheit. As if they slowly heat the virus in the lab, scientists observed that the outer viral membrane began to rupture within minutes if, and it fatally collapsed. And so what they actually recommend, they talk about right here, the blow dryer technique. So you take a hair dryer, put it on low, splash some water on your face so you get some vapor and put your cup your hands over and breathe it into your sinuses and your lungs because that's hot air and it will kill the coronavirus. That's what this article says. I'm not professing it. That's what the article says. But I haven't heard this on the news. And it says, wait an hour and do it again. Maybe you do it for five minutes for an hour for two hours, but they said that will pick up all the cells. If you wind up with a fever and a cough, try it. I don't know. Here's another thing I haven't heard. Uh, Teva Pharmaceuticals, which is an Israeli pharmaceutical company, is donating 10 million doses of hydroxychloroquine, which is the malaria uh, drug. But there was a test done, and I'm going to show you the test results in just a second, where in five days, people were cured of the coronavirus. Okay, 10 million doses are being donated to the U.S., this weekend, they're coming in from Israel so that we have enough uh, hydrochloroquine to, uh, to handle, that would be 2 million cases. You know, here's the other, here's the study. French study finds anti-malarial and antibiotic combo could reduce COVID-19 duration. 
Now, the problem is this was a small study. There were only 40 or 50 people in it. Here's the results of the study. I'm going to go down to the graphs. Here they are. The black line was the control group. It didn't take anything and it didn't see any benefit. The blue line here were the people that were on hydrochloroquine just by themselves and they did get a decrease. The green line is hydrochloroquine and an antibiotic and in five days they were zeroed out. Now what you keep hearing is that there are no cures, there is no vaccination. Here's two things that I've found that says this works based on laboratory, uh, laboratory results. So when, when we're listening to the news, understand, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna come back to this, understand there is a ratings revenue model that's in place and news agencies get their income based on how many people listen or view them, whether it's a newspaper, a magazine, how many people read it, how many, what's your subscription model. And to do that, they have to keep our interest. I'm also saying everything they say isn't, isn't lies, it's not. But there is an effort on their part to hold us through the commercials, to tune into this specific channel every night because we bring you the news first. We're the reliable source for your information. You know, uh, we're the number one news station in the market. All these things are promoted to us to tune into this station because we're first on the scene with the up-to-date up, up news. They want us to tune in and have them be the source of the information. And what I'm saying is we need to be the source of our information. And whenever, whenever we allow somebody to tell us how bad it is, it creates uncertainty in our future. It, it, can we survive? Do we, can we plan a vacation for this summer? What can we do? That creates a hysteria. It creates nervousness. It creates anxiety. And really, if you, if you look at your life, the only times I've really been anxious is when I couldn't predict what was going to happen in the future. Seventh grade, sitting in the principal's office. Okay, was I going to get what we used to get, wax or not? Was I going to get in trouble or was I going to get released? I had a little anxiety going on. I didn't know what was going to happen. As soon as we can predict our future, that anxiety goes away. That's really what I want to leave you with. So in this email are all these links I've showed you, and I hope that you found this beneficial. I got a couple more things. I just don't have time to go into all of it. I probably talked more tonight than I should have. But... Um, Again, let's stay safe. Let's follow the rules. I see most people doing that. Keep our social distancing. Keep our hands clean. Stay away from people who are coughing. If we have a fever, realize that we're going to affect other, infect other people. and We need to be responsible for that. Let's follow the rules. We'll get through this thing in flying colors and get back on our feet. Let's not get hysterical. And bottom line, toilet paper is not the answer, okay? <laughs> I do not know how this thing got started. I have not seen a roll of toilet paper on a shelf in LA in three weeks. Anyway, thanks for listening. And uh, I'll try to get something else out to you as soon as I can. And if you can, let me know what you think of this because I want this to be beneficial. There's a lot of things I can talk about. And this, what's on my, this is what is on my mind right now. So I want to share that with you. Good night.